Kalman filters are used extensively in financial markets trading to produce estimates of prices and correlations. They use a time frame of observed noisy prices to create a price estimate that tends to be more accurate than using the most recent price. We will first look at the general application of Kalman filters in signal processing and navigation systems and then focus on their use in trading strategies. Kalman filters are named after Rudolf Kalman, who is well known for his co-invention and development of this filter. It is a mathematical algorithm that is widely used in signal processing, control systems, and guidance, navigation, and control. Kalman filters were used during the Apollo program and furthermore in the NASA Space Shuttle in Navy submarines and in unmanned aerospace vehicles and weapons such as cruise missiles. Your GPS system probably uses it today in your car. It provides an efficient way to estimate the state of a process. Let's say you need to measure the temperature of a fiery path in a rocket booster. Hey, hey, no sensor is going to stand that heat. But you can take a measurement from another sensor a few inches hidden behind a heat shield and using that measurement, you can pretty closely estimate what the temperature inside the booster pathway is. Kalman filter does this in a way that minimizes the mean of the squared error. Doesn't this sound a bit like a prediction error? You are right. That's why we are going to use Kalman filters in this course, even though they may not be considered a machine learning technique by purists. But hey, we are here to use every possible advantage we can use to make money trading. Hence, knowing this filter is very powerful in several aspects. It supports estimations of past, present, and even future states, and it can do so even when the precise nature of the model system is unknown. That sounds exactly like financial markets, isn't it? Yes. No wonder Kalman filters are very extensively used in financial markets trading. Let's see more. A Kalman filter is needed when the variables of interest can be measured only indirectly or measurements that are available from multiple sources subject to noise. You can think of the Kalman filter as an unsupervised algorithm for tracking a single object in a continuous state space. Given a sequence of noisy measurements, the Kalman filter is able to recover the true state of the underlying object being tracked. Again, keep in mind the temperature on the path of the rocket booster's exhaust. A Kalman filter combines measurement and prediction to find an optimal estimate of the target value. For understanding Kalman filters, you must know a few technical terms and what they mean. In this course, we're not gonna teach you the math behind Kalman filter, but we will teach you enough to know how to implement Kalman filters in Python, especially for financial markets trading. You can see how the Kalman filter works by looking at this Kalman filter here. Given a sequence of noisy measurements, as you can see in the rocket booster's shield, the Kalman filter is able to discover the true temperature of the exhaust pathway by using the sensor measurement and applying a continuous recursive series of two steps. The first step is the time update step, which predicts, or you can say guesses, the current state estimate using the shield sensor's reading ahead in time. The second step is the measurement update, which adjusts the projected estimate by an actual measurement at that time. By this constant estimation correction cycle, you can imagine how the series will eventually stabilize around the actual value, or at least close to the temperature in the exhaust. Thus, you can see that the Kalman filter combines measurement and prediction to find an optimal estimate of the target value. For understanding Kalman filters, let us understand how it works using a real world example. Let's try to estimate a car's position using GPS sensors. Our goal is to best estimate the car's actual position using estimates of its observed state 
at various time intervals. Let us plot the car's position on the x-axis. At time k minus 1, we will call the initial estimate of the car's position on the road as x of k minus 1. This estimate has a mean and variance as seen in the probability density function in the chart. Now let us say that the GPS on the car, which has its own error, gives us an imprecise but somewhat better estimate than what we have as y of k. As we see in the chart, y of k has its own probability density function with a mean and variance. Now, our goal is to find the next estimate at time k, which will be x of k. How do we find it? As we said earlier, a Kalman filter gives us the ability to combine the measurement and our prediction to find an optimal estimate of the car's position. Of course, we need a few cycles of this measurement prediction loop to continue before we can settle on an optimal position. The next question is how? The equations on the screen show you the math behind that loop. The box on top shows you the measurement as it goes through its own dynamics to produce a measurement. Let's call it y of k. The box below that shows us a model we have built to predict the car's position, which we call the car model, and it produces its own prediction called x of k. The Kalman filter combines them to produce an optimal estimate using a simple equation, as we will see in the next slide. Voila, here's the Kalman filter's main equation. It tells us how we can make an estimate of the car's position given our prior estimate, let's call it a priori estimate, and an update term, which is the difference of our initial estimate multiplied by a constant c and the car's measurement y of k. Notice that this update term is also multiplied by another constant called k. So using the a priori estimate and the update term, which we will use to predict the next term, we will constantly be calculating the k term. We will continue this process until the k term stabilizes then we know that we have arrived at an optimal estimate of the car's position. All of this, of course, happens in seconds. That's why we see on our GPS a car's position on a map as close as possible within seven feet of the actual position on the road. There are lots of different kinds of Kalman filters. The one we saw earlier had all kinds of linear equations, as you saw, and the probability density functions were assumed to be Gaussian, hence it is known as the Kalman filter. Few assumed a slightly more complex equation such as locally linear function, but the same Gaussian function, it is known as the extended Kalman filter. This enables you to model slightly nonlinear functions. The next step is the unscented Kalman filter which uses nonlinear equations in this model and has medium computational cost. Finally, the most computationally intensive one uses both nonlinear equations and does not assume that the probability density function is not Gaussian. This example, which is derived from the blog post listed on screen, uses two related ETFs, the iShares MSCI Australia, ticker symbol EWA, and the iShares MSCI Canada, ticker symbol EWC. We will download their pricing data from Panda's data reader to download the daily adjusted closing prices for the EWA and EWC ETFs from Yahoo. Let's assume two ETFs, EWA and EWC, are highly correlated to each other, which, as you can see, is a valid assumption. The question is, knowing one, can we predict what the other's price will be? You might think this doesn't sound like a Kalman filter problem of the kind we discussed before. But if you think deeply about it, you will remember that Kalman filters all about predicting one state using another state and a measurement, an update. In this case, we will use one ticker as a measurement and the correlation coefficient as the multiplier on that measurement. As you can imagine, as long as the correlation holds, we can hopefully use one to predict the other. Suppose the correlation varies? In that case, instead of using a linear equation, we will use a nonlinear equation to model our prediction. Clearly, the relationships between the ETFs changes between 2010 and 2014 and can't be 
accurately described by a simple linear regression with constant slope and intercept. Remember that a Kalman filter is a linear state space model that operates recursively on streams of noisy input data to produce a statistically optimal estimate of the underlying system state. Let's set up a Kalman filter using the PyCalman library, which you can install. Let's use EWC to predict EWA. We are going to set some initial values for the Kalman filter, then we feed the EWC values to the filter and see what we get. Here we will use EWC to predict EWA. Let's look at the mean and covariance of the predicted states using the filter applied to EWC's values. Notice that the slope of the correlation equation is not a constant and it actually declines slightly over time. Similarly, the intercept also varies and seems to rise slightly over time. A more interesting way to visualize this is to overlay every fifth regression line on the EWA versus EWC scatter plot so we can clearly see how the regression line adjusts over time. You can read more about this and other topics related to Kalman filter and finance at the link given here.